Hello, my name is Jason Pierce, and I serve as the provost here at Young Harris College. As provost, it's my responsibility to make sure you have the best possible YHC experience from application to graduation. My primary role is as the college's chief academic officer, and in this video, I'll be helping you read through your fall course schedule. Let's get started. This video is arranged in three parts. In part one, I'll show you how to access your schedule. If you've done this already, no worries. This part will be quite short. In part two, I'll show you how to understand your schedule. In this part, I'll also talk about when classes are scheduled and how long they run, so you'll get a sense of what a week will be like during the semester. And I'll talk a little bit about credits or credit hours, which are how we measure your progress toward graduation. Finally, in part three, I'll answer a few frequently asked questions. If you haven't already watched Dr. Hallett's video on academic advising, which was posted to this channel a few weeks ago, I recommend you watch that first. To get started, you'll need to access your schedule online. You should have received an email from your admissions counselor with a link to a web page like this. If you can't find that email, just let us know and we'll resend it. Every applicant's web page is slightly different depending on your curricular and extracurricular interests. You should see a link at the top of the right-hand column that reads, View My YHC Class Schedule. Click there. This will take you to Self-Service, the college's student information system. As a YHC student, you'll use this for a number of tasks, like registering for classes, checking grades, or paying bills. The college is upgrading the self-service interface this summer, so it may look a little different when you log in, but not much. Use your YHC network ID and password to log in. If you've forgotten it, don't worry. Your admissions counselor can help you get it reset. Once you've logged in, click on the Classes tab at the top, then on the Schedule sub-tab, and finally on Student Schedule. That will take you to your course schedule for the fall 2020 semester. Here, you'll see a model schedule that we've created for our athletics mascot, Luke the Mountain Lion, using real courses with real instructors. In part two, we'll take a closer look at what it all means. If we zoom in a bit on Luke's schedule, you'll see six courses organized alphabetically by their prefix and number. Each course is identified on the first line using a four-letter prefix, a four-digit number, the type of credit awarded, the section number, and the course title. Now that's a lot of information, so let's take it piece by piece. First, the prefixes, which indicate a course's department or discipline. You can see that Luke is taking courses in Chemistry, C-H-E-M, English, E-N-G-L, Foundations, F-O-U-N, we'll get back to this, History, H-I-S-T, and Math, M-A-T-H. You'll also see that all of these courses are 1000 level courses, as YHC uses the first digit of a course's number to indicate its intended year, so one for first year, two for sophomore, and so on. There are some exceptions, so don't worry if you have a 2000 level course on your schedule, that's fine. Most courses at YHC carry lecture credit, and you'll see that this is the case with Luke's schedule. Note, though, that there are two Chem 1211 courses, one listed as lecture and the other as lab. In the natural sciences, most courses fit this pattern, with lectures scheduled two or three times a week and an associated lab scheduled once a week, often in a different room. You'll also notice a two-digit number after the lecture or lab designation. That is the course section number. Because we're so small at Young Harris, many courses, particularly upper-level courses, are taught in only one section. But many first-year courses are offered in multiple sections, each taught by a different instructor in a different classroom at a different time. Luke, for example, is in English 1101 Section 7 with Dr. Looper, Foundations 1000 Section 4 with Dr. Woodbury, and Math 1113 Section 4 with Dr. Peacock. If you're a first-year student, your schedule likely has at least one of these courses on it, but you're probably in a different section from Luke. Multiple sections are how we keep class sizes small. All the courses on Luke's schedule and on yours should be pretty intuitive, except perhaps for Foundations 1000. So what's that exactly? At Young Harris, we recognize that for many college students, the first semester is the toughest. 
You're learning new systems, meeting new people, and trying to adjust to a lot of changes. Foundations 1000 has been developed to help you during this transition, to establish a solid foundation, if you will, for subsequent learning. In the courses, you'll focus not only on the written curriculum, such as the graduation requirements published in the undergraduate catalog online, or the community standards published in the Guide to Student Life, but also on the hidden curriculum of college, those best practices for how to organize your time and take advantage of student services. Set yourself up for success throughout your time in the Enchanted Valley. All Foundations 1000 sections are scheduled either on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 9.50 a.m., as Luke's is here, or on the same days from 1.30 to 2.20 p.m. This allows us to have some larger training sessions on the Fridays, or rather, it will once it's safe to gather again in larger groups. Each section also has an embedded peer mentor, an upper-level student who knows the ropes at YHC and will work with your instructor to help you get accustomed to college. Now let's turn our attention to credits. If grades and GPAs measure the quality of your learning or how well you've done, credits measure the quantity or how much you've done. To graduate with a bachelor's degree, you must earn at least 120 credits, each of which represents about an hour of instructional time per week for an entire semester. Most students take eight semesters to complete a degree, which means taking and passing on average 15 credits per term to graduate on time. As you can see, Luke has 15 this fall, so he's all set. You may have more or fewer credits on your schedule, and that's fine. Averaging 15 per semester does not mean having 15 each semester. On the next line, you'll see the days, times, and classrooms of each course. Classes at YHC are typically scheduled on weekdays only, with the earliest classes typically beginning at 8 a.m. and most ending by 3.30 p.m. There are some exceptions, though, including science labs and performing arts courses, which often are scheduled in the afternoons or evenings. Most three-credit courses, which are far and away the most common, are scheduled to meet either for 50 minutes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, represented as M, W, and F on this schedule, or for 75 minutes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, represented as T and R. There's also a Monday-Wednesday slot from 11 a.m. to 12.15 p.m., which allows for some meetings to occur during that time on Fridays. Note on Luke's schedule that Foundations 1000 is a two-credit course, so while it's scheduled to meet during one of those Monday-Wednesday-Friday slots, it meets only on Mondays and Wednesdays, with the Friday set aside for other activities. Now there's one last thing I want to draw your attention to on this page, and that is the Foundations 1000 instructor. If you're a first year student, your Foundations instructor serves as your academic advisor during your first semester. For Luke, that's Dr. Woodbury, who happens to be a business professor. The students in Luke's section are not all business majors. Odds are that most are not actually, and that's fine. As a liberal arts college, YHC believes in a broad education. So we want you to meet and get to know faculty members across campus, regardless of what you plan to study. Later, once you've settled in, we'll assign you an academic advisor who's a faculty member in your major or one of your majors, if you're planning to double major. Before we go to the FAQs, let me show you one trick in self-service, and that's the grid view. If you find lots of text confusing, then this may help you make more sense of your schedule. Click on the grid link in the left-hand column, and you'll be taken to a different view of your fall course schedule, arranged by days and times. The interface can cut off the ends of class meetings, which makes it look like some courses are shorter than they actually are, like chemistry and English on Luke's schedule. But you can see them if you mouse over on a full-size display. This view can help if you're a visual learner, and it will be useful later this fall when you're building your spring schedule and need to avoid scheduling conflicts between courses.
let's wrap up by answering some of the questions we've heard from you about fall courses. First, how do I change my schedule? You'll be able to make changes when you arrive in August. During orientation, you'll have plenty of opportunities to meet with your Foundations 1000 instructor and with your peer mentor to discuss options. Next, do I have to take all of these courses? All students are required to take and pass certain general education or gen ed core courses, including Foundations 1000, two 1000 level English composition courses, a math course, a natural science course with lab, and an American history or government course. Other gen ed requirements may be more flexible or may be determined by a major program. Will Advanced Placement AP or International Baccalaureate IB courses affect my schedule? Yes, they can. If you achieve a high enough AP or IB score, you may earn credit for a course in which you were registered, but don't worry. We'll get that all sorted out when you get to campus in August. What if I have dual enrollment credit? The college must receive your official community college, college, or university transcript for all dual enrollment courses in order to award you credit. Your high school transcript will not suffice, even if it shows the same courses. We can only accept your post-secondary school transcript, so please make sure that we have that as well as your high school transcript. If you're not sure what you've sent, contact your admissions counselor. Will courses be starting in person as planned? That is our current plan, yes. This has been a turbulent year, to say the least, so we will continue to monitor the latest data and be prepared to be flexible. But we recognize that the emergency shift to online instruction in the spring, while necessary, did not lead to the best outcomes for most high school and undergraduate college students. So we will work to implement additional health and safety protocols informed by the latest research and guidance in an effort to return to in-person instruction this fall. And one last reminder, please make sure that you have had your official high school transcripts submitted to the admissions office. While we were flexible this spring and summer and offered conditional admission based on unofficial transcripts due to the challenge of getting official ones in the midst of the COVID chaos, we must receive your official transcript in order to admit you formally. I hope this video has helped you access and understand your fall 2020 YHC course schedule. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your admissions counselor. For my part, I hope you have a safe and healthy rest of the summer, and I look forward to seeing you on campus this August. Stay strong, Mountain Lions.